uh, talk here is going to be about analyzing uh, Shodan uh, images with optical character recognition. Your speaker is uh, Michael Portera, and momentarily he is going to fix up the slide. So please give him a warm welcome. Okay, let's try this again. Okay. Uh, so first off, really appreciate everybody being here. I know there's some really awesome stuff going on right now, and you're spending your time with me, so I'm super humbled by that, and uh, hopefully you get something out of this today. So analyzing Shodan images with optical character recognition, that's a mouthful. Really what are we trying to accomplish here is we're extracting text uh, out of screenshots that, of course, come from Shodan. So uh, really quick about me. Uh, I work for a large consulting firm where I primarily uh, do threat hunting and open source intelligence. Uh, I've got some credentials listed there if you care about those. Uh, I'm on Twitter, which is a great way to connect with me if you'd like to do so. And in my spare time, uh, I like to hang out with my family and tinker with Raspberry Pis and Arduinos. And if my wife is watching, hello. So, okay, so what's this whole thing about? So, uh, as I mentioned, I like to mess around with Raspberry Pis. I was in Magpie Magazine for literally the nerdiest thing ever invented. It was literally a Raspberry Pi that was connected to some servo motors that uh, <laughs> was a, a device built out of Lego that scanned Magic the Gathering cards, upload them to an API to tell you exactly what they're worth in real time. Uber nerd here, okay. First, first to admit that, so. <laughs> right, so anyways, it got me involved with doing optical character recognition. So I was using some cool products like Tesseract and OpenCV, uh, and so I, I really had a hard time getting consistent uh, uh, results with that, and so I'll go ahead and say it's probably operator error. Uh, so I found out about AWS, had a free tier, so I could do uh, what I needed to do and had a lot of success for super cheap. And, and any of you that know for me personally, you know that I'm super frugal, so that's a win-win. Uh, so I wanted to do this, like I said, uh, on a cost-effective manner with a low level of effort. So I started doing this uh, with Shodan. I said, hey, I use Shodan a lot for my everyday job, so why not try to apply uh, this methodology uh, uh, using that particular data source? Uh, so I did. And so around that same time, the FBI uh, issued a warning about, hey, RDP out in the wild has been exploited. This is nothing new. But uh, there was a rise back in September. So I said, cool, this is relevant. Why not tell what other people uh, I'm doing, how I'm doing it? Uh, and hence, I submitted to Shmookon, and here I am. Uh, so as we do this, yes, this is about talking uh, about Shodan images and about this process, but really that's what the focus is, is the actual process, and hopefully if you get anything out of this today, it's inspiration to go do, uh, to go take this and do something awesome in your everyday job. So, so these are the kind of things we expect to find uh, using uh, optical character recognition is the way you can do this. Uh, I have to admit, uh, between the time I submitted this and my talk now, Shodan did start rolling out uh, optical character recognition character recognition for uh, RDP images. We're going to talk about applying that to VNC and webcams. Uh, but these are the kind of things you can find. So I shared this query on Shodan, and of course this is ransomware, still out there, still doing uh, bad things. But anyways, you can go take a look on uh, Shodan and uh, use that same query. So I could make all kind of Alabama jokes and being simple, and so I will. So I like simple things. I like a simple process. So how do we do this? Well, all we got to do is hit the Shodan API. We take the base64 encoded image and pass it along to AWS. Boom. We get our output. Go dump it into JSON. Go dump it into CSV, whatever output you want to put it in. And then you analyze all the things. So simple as that. And I have some code written that will automate that task for you, uh, which we'll talk about here in just a second. So most of you should know what Shodan is. If you don't, it is basically uh, the Google of devices connected to the internet. Uh, they do have a free membership. Uh, if you have, uh, they have a free tier and a membership tier if you have an EDU account. Uh, it's actually a free upgrade. Uh, if you don't, you can, get, uh, you can get it for 50 bucks. It's a lifetime, uh, it's good for life. Uh, or you can try to get a Black Friday sale for only five bucks. Uh, if you don't have any money and you don't have an EDU, there's also a free tier. Uh, and we can still get the screenshots from that using the API. Uh, and again, the script I wrote uh, can hit that same API. You just have to feed it your credentials. So, and as I mentioned, they did start rolling some of this out uh, in late December 2018, making our lives a little bit easier. So as an example, if we're trying to stay within our free tiers, uh, we can use filters. So this particular example is looking for screenshots uh, in the Amazon cloud. Um, 
oh, excuse me, specifically, that's the Chipotle, uh, so looking specifically for port 3389, so looking for RDP images. Uh, so again, this is trying to stay within our, uh, trying to narrow that search down before we go and run the API if we're trying not to, uh, you know, to, to run up a tab. So how do we actually do this? Really simple. Uh, if you're doing the membership tier, it is a little bit easier to use the command line interface. Uh, this, that showed in. Uh, CLI is actually very well documented. Uh, this will, I'll actually up this, uh, upload this to uh, the GitHub repo so it's actually very easy to follow. Uh, again, we've got a sample query of how to actually uh, get those images to see how many are uh, out there. Um, and if you're using the free tier, uh, you actually can't use the CLI, at least from what I've been able to tell. Uh, so you can use the API script uh, that I'm going to provide you guys. So what is AWS recognition? Uh, so it's a machine learning API that performs OCR. Uh, you can also extract things out of there like facial recognition. You can do uh, object scene and activity detection, which uh, I'll show you at the, the end of this and so maybe uh, inspire some use cases for that. Uh, you can also, uh, you get 5,000 images per month uh, for an entire year after that. I mean, we're talking pennies, so super cheap. And again, not a plug for AWS. There's Google Cloud Vision, there's Microsoft, there's, uh, that also have free tiers. As I mentioned, there's Simple CV, uh, Open CV, um, Tesseract. They're all fantastic engines to be able to do the same types of things uh, with just a, a little bit more effort and training. Um, you don't have to store things in the cloud. You don't have to upload things to S3 buckets. You can do it directly with local files uh, and just hit the API. Uh, to get set up with AWS, it's actually very simple. Uh, you just have to set up identity access management once you actually get an account going. Uh, of course, you know, install Boto3. And then you just have to enable uh, a local file on your machine to be able to call those credentials uh, when you call the API. So, auto magic. Like I said, this is at my GitHub repo. Last time I did a live demo, I got uber burned, so I'm not going to do a live demo, but I will show you some output. Uh, the demo gods were not on my side. Uh, so anyways, really super simple. We've just got some flags for text detection or sending it to the object detection API um, or uh, uh, using a directory to go look up the images or just using a single, API or single IP address to go to Shodan and send it directly to, to AWS and get our output. Uh, one of the things we're going to talk about when you're actually interpreting the results is looking at line versus word. That'll make sense on the next slide. One thing I really don't like about AWS is it doesn't do a good job with uh, foreign character uh, recognition. Uh, Google Cloud Vision does a really awesome job with that. So again, there's pros and cons to each. So something to keep in mind is uh, if you're trying to incorporate this uh, into your process. So hopefully you guys can, uh, hopefully you can read some of this. Uh, so this is an example of something that was connected to the internet. A, uh, th apparently this is a water pump for a fish farm. I'd never heard of this. Uh, go figure. Uh, connected to the internet, probably not the best thing in the world. But you can see right here that we have, uh, when we actually um, get our output, there's an IP address. There's the text that actually picked up. There's a confidence rating, and then you have line versus word. Line just means that it saw things in a single line versus word, where it's actually dissecting every single word it's found. I find lines really helpful, uh, especially if you're looking at, think about like an RDP image and you have a bunch of names across there, uh, being able to tell those are actually on the same line. Uh, of course, you can do word too. It's up to you. I just happen to work with lines uh, a little more often. So, And you can see that this is actually pretty uh, Accurate. I mean, you have a 90% uh, accuracy rating on the very top line, and you know that is accurate. So uh, we've come a long way in this field, and again, super cheap, super accessible. Uh, so hopefully, again, hopefully this inspires you to get thinking about how you may be able to use this. As I mentioned, alternate Google Cloud version does a fantastic job. Here it's detected both English and Greek uh, on the same screen. It's also detected Chinese characters, Portuguese, Japanese. That will extract that for you. You can take that and then use a translation service to figure out what's actually there. Uh, so, so as you're thinking about, you know, how could I do this? What, what are my options? Google Cloud's good. Again, Tesseract. There's, there's a number of things that you can do, a uh, number of services out there. So. So I'm going to hope this, uh, this, this example makes sense. Uh, I did this to keep this within the API limits for both AWS uh, and Shodan. Uh, so I did this a few weeks ago. And so the whole experiment was, you know, how many industrial control systems, how, how many IoT devices are already out there? So Shodan does a really good job of tagging these for us, and they're looking at things like banner grabs, looking at open ports. Uh, so that's really cool. But, you know, let's take this a step further and say, you know, are there any other devices that we can find? Uh, and so what I ended up doing was I took uh, all of the unauthenticated VNC instances that were out there that had, a sh that had an image on Shodan, 
and uh, grabbed those and fed some keywords like motor, power, things that you would normally find on a controller panel and uh, ran those through the recognition service. So we had a little bit over 2,300 images that were analyzed. And so out of those, we found an additional 319 uh, devices. So over 10% of that population. So that's, that's super cool, right? And so 12 of those had already been tagged by Shodan, but using this methodology, we found an additional 307 that weren't found by Shodan. So that's pretty awesome. And uh, so with that being said, um, like I said, that's, uh, if we're trying to do some research on IoT and ICS, that's, that's something we can employ. Um, that being said, uh, sorry, try to look at my notes, whoops. So anyways, like I said, that's, that's a really cool uh, uh, experiment we can do. You can do this on your own. Uh, there's you know, fancy graphics if you like those. Uh, down at the bottom, other things I came across while doing this, uh, there were <laughs> 12 active hacking attempts. Uh, that was coming from an IP in Russia. They were trying to download malware. So if you think about this from a threat intelligence perspective, there we go. Uh, that gives us some intel there. I will say that, that particular IP lights up like a Christmas tree, and you put it in any threat intel source, so nothing real new here. But say it had been, that could be some, uh, some insight for us. Email addresses, so open browser sessions, whatever else. Uh, was on there, uh, or maybe it was a login, uh, we could detect that. Clear text passwords, for whatever reason, it's already un unauthenticated, so I don't know why they're even there. Uh, and then we had an, one instance of a cyber vigilante. What does that mean? Some guy had bought up Notepad on OpenVNC instance and said, hey, you should probably close this port. And guess what? He's absolutely right. Uh, so, so that was kind of interesting. Found all kind of stuff uh, uh, going through that. Um, and so one thing I want to clarify, though, on the, the, uh, IOS, the ICS and IoT stuff, so I, I'm not saying these are directly connected to the Internet. These were associated in some form or fashion. These may have been controllers that were connected further to the network or whatever. I, these are just those that are associated with those types of devices. So, so some sample applications. Uh, if we're doing recon, uh, looking at things that are actually connected to these RDP boxes and VSC is we can extract things like machine names. So knowing the exact machine name uh, or a machine naming convention could be useful for social engineering or reconnaissance. Uh, um, we can know some, who's logged in at real time. Uh, looking at some of these images, we could figure out who actually deals with cloud uh, in some of these things. And uh, we could use this for if you're trying to do post analysis on engagement, you've done eyewitness and you've did a bunch of RDP screenshots, maybe run it against that. Maybe if you've done interpreter sessions and, you know, like I said, post analysis and wanting to figure out uh, whatever analysis you want to do, you can do that using this technique. Um, think of it from, from a d defensive perspective is uh, I'm an organization, I'm trying to figure out, you know, who in my organization is going setting up uh, cloud instances. Well, use, extracting usernames, extracting business names, you can figure that out now. Uh, and identifying third-party risk, if I have a business partner and he's putting, uh, he's a, he has a really bad cloud security, uh, that's something we may, know, we may want to know as well. Uh, we saw earlier about a ransomware attack, so there's also some threat intel. Uh, this is more uh, geared towards stuff, things that I do, so this is really relevant for me. And other, uh, I actually debated on bringing this up, but I'm going to go ahead and do it because I think it could do some good. Uh, so when I was going across the, uh, the text output uh, from the images, I saw some really disturbing language. Uh, that made me sick to my stomach because I do have a child. Uh, it was somebody that was on an unauthenticated VNC machine uh, that was using Freenet to go download child pornography. I freaked out, never come across anything like that before. So I made some phone calls, including a local FBI agent and some buddies, and said, hey, man, what do I do? He goes, hey, there's an Innocent Lives Foundation. And they, uh, and they, uh, yeah, cool. So awesome. Uh, and that's why I wanted to bring that up. So if you guys have never heard of Innocent Lives Foundation, they actually specialize in doing this. They, they help build cases against child predators, and they work with law enforcement to, to try to catch these, and they've actually had a, a lot of success. So if you guys haven't heard of them, please check them out. Please consider supporting them. And uh, as I mentioned, so I gave my info to them. I gave my info to the FBI. But, but think about that for a second, is that was just a crazy coincidence that at that time, that was on there, and we were able to find that. So employing this technique could find things like that. This is a tactic that bad guys are using. Then, wow, we can do something really novel. We can do some real good. That's powerful. So something to think about uh, for doing some good. If you want to collaborate on, on trying to do that too, hey, hit me up on Twitter. OK, so uh, last thing I'm going to talk about are uh, webcams, uh, so finding things out there that are on the internet. Uh, this is another thing I did that was within our, our free scope. Uh, so uh, there's a query down there at the bottom. Feel free to replicate that and go, go look at all the things. Uh, so uh, the interesting thing here is uh, the privacy concerns. 
So if you notice, there are a ton that uh, had the word like human, monitor, computer monitor, uh, living room, computer, bedroom, dining table. That's really terrifying. These poor people probably have no clue that these things are connected to the internet. Uh, and most of these seem to be minicam.com and yallcam.com. I'm not familiar with those, but if you're a vulnerability researcher, please go check that out. Uh, not good. Uh, so, <laughs> and we talk about poor, you know, poor people not knowing this. Uh, so I, I actually did some OSINT and found five people who had open webcams. So I contacted them and I got one response back. Some small yogurt shop in Ohio that said, oh my gosh, that's awful. And so how do I fix it? So I told them. That was great, but you know, I don't know if some other people just thought I was a creep or just <laughs> didn't care. So I mean, what would you do if you got an email like that? Yeah, probably delete. Uh, so, anyways, so so this is uh, these are some other things we can kind of do. But for the uh, but for legitimate purposes, here's how good we've gotten with this. Uh, so here is a webcam that's connected to the internet. Some of these people put these out there purposely for everybody to go see. There's sometimes colleges that do this. A lot of people are unsuspecting. As I mentioned, there were some privacy concerns. A lot of people just hook up their 3D printers, and that's what they want to watch remotely. Okay, cool. Uh, so anyways, so this is a, a, a screenshot that we pulled off the internet, uh, or pulled off Shodan. And so this is pretty impressive. So this was able to detect that this was actually a brewery. And this isn't the best picture in the world. Lo and behold, this actually is a distillery somewhere in Kansas. So, uh, so that's kind of cool that we're able to do that. Uh, same thing with this is, uh, I'll admit, I'm from Alabama. I didn't know what the word peace meant, but now I do, because uh, we really don't have snow in Alabama. Uh, but anyways, you can detect that there's snow, that this is nature, this is outdoors. And if you look really hard, you'll see some people in there. And it was actually able to pick up that there's a person there. So we've come a long way. That's really impressive. So if you're doing physical security and you have security uh, cameras to review or whatever the situation may be, or you have other video analysis or fo photo analysis you want to do, these types of technologies are out there again. This is meant to expire, uh, inspire, and uh, hopefully this will you know, spark some ideas. OK, so this is my last slide. So what are some other use cases for, for doing text detection, object detection? Uh, if any of you guys are participating in Trace Labs, or if you, even, if you don't know about Trace Labs, fantastic organization uh, that focuses on doing capture the flags for missing persons. Uh, so fantastic mission there. Um, uh, so keep an eye out for them. They, they usually go to some, uh, a lot of conferences. So think about if you're trying to find somebody and you, have a, a, uh, you, ha you know who the person is and you have a collection of photos, you can start doing facial analysis uh, on that. When you think about physical security, maybe kind of a fun um, um, experiment to do is you have a video doorbell and somebody comes to your door. Yes, you have the video. You can do some analysis on that. You can profile somebody. If you're running monitor mode, you can pick up SSID probes. So some you know, jabroni <laughs> breaks into your house, now you have the SSID probes, and then you have actual analysis of, uh, of profiling that person. Uh, so just stuff to think about. And of course, one of the big use cases within uh, information security is data loss prevention and trying to detect uh, sensitive content in an image file. Uh, so anyways, so that's that. Uh, hopefully, this was helpful for you guys. And again, uh, there's many ways to, to do this. Um, you know, like I said, not a plug for AWS. There's tons of open source libraries. There's tons of other services out there that do this. But just to get you guys thinking about, hey, how can I use this more organization? As I've shown, it's actually super easy and uh, very accessible. Uh, so that's it. I uh, really appreciate you guys being here again. And uh, hopefully you got something out of it.